turbulent times require great and resilient leadership. In other words, great leadership is a key requirement during turbulent times. Good afternoon from the studios of Metro TV here in Accra, Ghana, the west coast of Africa. It is that time for Leadership 360 conversation. Let's see our sponsors, Goyal PLC, FV Global Consult, and V5 Solutions Limited. We are live this afternoon on DSTV channel 277 and on Facebook at Metro TV Ghana. I'm yours truly, Dr. Victor Abe, your host, your regular host. Let's take a quick message from our sponsors and we shall commence the conversation this afternoon. I promise on my honor to be a better leader every day, faithful and loyal to my country, organization, and fellow team members, countrymen and women. I pledge myself to remain true to the core values of integrity and self-discipline through my daily choices and actions. My mind is alert, focused at all times. I shall show respect to everyone always and every time. I remain a better leader and team player always. So I pledge. And so I pledge too. Welcome back. We are live on Metro TV Ghana here in Accra, the west coast of West Africa, in the west coast of Africa. Our topic for discussion today is leadership in turbulent times. Leadership in turbulent times. But before we delve into the conversation, let me be quick to express my gratitude to Humanitarian Award Global for the recognition of our work over the period 2023, 2023 period, being selected among the 100 most inspiring change makers in Ghana is indeed humbling. I am grateful. Let me also quickly take the opportunity to wish a very industrious woman, Mrs. Grace Oklu, a very, very wonderful birthday. A happy birthday for that matter. You've been such an amazing woman to celebrate you. If there is, you are, if there's any way to describe you, I will say you are an epitome of resilience. God richly bless you. Now, Undoubtedly, the period from COVID-19 till now is or can best be described as very turbulent across the globe. It brings to the fore questions regarding the, the real state of affairs on the global platform, regarding the socio-political and economic you know, uh, trends that we are witnessing. It's giving tough time to both individuals companies, countries, continents, and the globe at large. To help us address some of these challenges or find meaning to some of the, the, the real issues facing us are two very wonderful gentlemen by name Dr. Patrick Ba Akwa and Mr. Mark Kweku Obe Apple. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Leadership Tricity Conversation. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so we are much. happy you. you responded to our call to grace the occasion. Thank you. That's thank great. You well, <laughs> now, uh, without so much ado, I will go straight up to the, the point. Um, to start with you, Mark, what is the general picture with regards to the issue about turbulence in the world and so on and so forth? What is the situation? All right. Thank you, dog. And uh, thank you, viewers. Uh, quick one, uh, so I can pay tribute or thank my employers for allowing me to be here, Goyle PLC. I am sitting here in, in their name. And also all my loved ones watching all over the world and home and my village and all that. I think it's a very profound question uh, when you are trying to link turbulence to leadership. And so if you don't, if you permit me, 
so I can also be a team player, however, and then give room to my, my colleague. Let me just quickly break turbulence down, just snap short, so our viewers would join us and understand that. When we say turbulence, without being very bookish, it's just anything that is not normal, that disrupts life. So what it means is that um, a storm in your life, an earthquake in your life, a wind in your life, or anything that destabilizes you. So instability generally in your life, that makes your normal life not normal, is generally what one may say is turbulence. Okay. Now, um, turbulence is also a very fine concept. So what it means is that text, textuality is important and context is also important. What do we mean by textuality? In the aviation environment or in the aeroplane, uh, turbulence is often used for people traveling in the aeroplane so that when the airlines or the aeroplane is 20,000 miles above food level and then the storm or wind and then the pilot will say there is going to be turbulence because of the stability and those on the sea. In an individual person's life, when you are, uh, you are sick or you lose your job or otherwise, it could all be you lose a loved one, it could all be turbulence. But in the context of this conversation, which is why we are here, you are looking at the, the, the corporate and then the international arena. And what it means is that there are too many variables which will tip the turbulence, which will create turbulence and tip uh, you know, leadership. So whether uh, you will be able to withstand the storms of life. So for example, war. War is a major turbulence that actually is a geopolitical matter and impacts corporate leaders mm -hmm. as well. Today, as we talk, there's war in <laughs> Russia and Ukraine has been raging on for many years. It's a uh, turbulence. Mm -hmm. There's another one in the Middle East now ongoing with a lot of ramifications to oil and energy and all that. Look, um, Ghana is among the Af poor or, you know, debt distressed nations all over Africa and Latin America. Since the, the end of the COVID, COVID is also a disease and turbulence in the, in the geopolitical arena encompasses epidemics and pandemics. So all said and done, mm -hmm. turbulent, it's, it's a huge concept, but that is how it manifests itself in the leadership uh, plane. And so one must understand that war, uh, debt distress, financial crisis, name it, uh, supply chain uh, constraints, mm -hmm. uh, epidemics, pandemics, etc., are all matters of, you know, turbulence that actually impact leadership. So as to whether you will be able to be a good leader in the corporate or the international platform depends on your appreciation of all these turbulence and how to navigate mm -hmm. around them. Thank you. That's, that's quite in, you know, detailed, giving yeah. us a background to what turbulence <laughs> is all about. That's right. Uh, so the war, the you know, epidemics, pandemics, and all that. That's great. Now, uh, Dr. Patrick, Let's, Mark has given us a background. Now, I want us to zero in on finance and the banking, economics. You have a very strong uh, background in banking and finance, and basically econs, uh, economics as well. What is the situation like in, uh, on the globe? All right, Doc, thank you so much. And as my, my, let me copy my colleague. Uh, I just want to thank all my friends and loved ones, those who support us. and those who have decided to watch the program and all those who are also hearing us. Um, I think that in terms of um, leadership in turbulence, um, what we are trying to say is that the leader's ability to navigate um, his or her organization mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, the purpose for which we are set up to do mm -hmm. is achieved. Okay. And so basically at the organizational level, banking and finance space and wherever it is, it's just about setting out to overcome the challenges. I'm sure he actually listed some of them. Okay. 
I mean, recently we just slept, we woke up and there's COVID and nobody mm -hmm. could even walk into a bank. Mm -hmm. You could even have the money in your bank account mm -hmm. and you will even be able to withdraw. Yeah, in fact, yeah. even if you withdraw, what are you even going to do with the money? Because we saw the streets were virtually empty. And back to the leadership of those banks, how are you going to serve the customers? Because the person who is coming in even as a customer, you are scared of the person. Mm -hmm. At a point, we couldn't hug, we couldn't shake hands, we couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But yes, still, you need to serve that person. Okay. And so when you are looking at leadership at that level, what we are saying is that our ability mm -hmm. to adapt the situation mm -hmm. or re-strategize ourselves mm -hmm. to be able to achieve the same purpose that was set out to okay. um, achieve as far as the organizations are concerned. And so, I mean, the, the, the example, I mean, can you survive in the environment if you claim you are an organization? and you're a leader, can you survive in an environment where there are wars? Mm -hmm. I mean, COVID-19 mm -hmm. and what have you? Okay. There's no way. So as a stance, mm -hmm. what we actually uh, maybe in future will be looking at the sustainability of how those strategies that we put mm -hmm. in place is concerned. I'm Def sure we'll come definitely there. Definitely, yeah, we, sure. we, we may get sure. to that. Sure. But I just wanted to, to pick your mind on as we speak, as we speak. Indeed, COVID came. Um, it gave birth to so many um, uh, issues where uh, co companies will have to re-strategize. But I want to pick your mind on what is the situation as we speak within the finance space, banking and finance space. What, 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 what are some of the key issues that are causing turbulence All right. within the system? Thank you, Doc. Um, in terms of banking and finance space, maybe in Ghana, in Africa, yeah. all over the world, yeah. things are not normal anymore. Um, why do I say that? Now, because of the COVID-19 that came, I mean, it shook the foundation of the whole world. And the way we used to do banking, mm -hmm. I mean, things have changed now. Mm -hmm. You have leaders who are now thinking outside the box mm -hmm. in a way that um, either too, you would have asked the customer to walk into the banking hall to withdraw money. Now mm -hmm. we say, no, sit in your house. Mm -hmm. We are actually giving you or deploying technology mm -hmm. that will allow you to access the same service that you used to access, be access before mm -hmm. technological, uh, before the, 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 the disruptions, if you, okay. if you like. Yeah. So basically, in the banking and finance space, We've changed the way we, we reason, we've changed the way we are serving customers, we've changed the way, in fact, even when it comes to budget, when it comes to costs and everything, mm -hmm. we are changing things as okay. far as the banking and finance space right. is concerned. Now, sometimes um, I was talking to somebody and it's like, oh, half of banks and you don't need money because we manage money. Sometimes people think that banks do not need money. Mm -hmm. In fact, banks also need money because it's a business. Now, I remember in some few years, somewhere um, 2009, there about one of the banks, leading banks in Ghana, the, the, when you call and then the phone, I mean, the, 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 the voice that you hear is that as a businessman, you need to drink tough waters. It tells you that mm -hmm. even in the banking mm -hmm. and finance space, you still have to take the tough decisions, you still have to drink the tough waters, and to summarize the whole thing, what I'm trying to say is that okay. things are not the same as it used to be. Okay. The leadership in the banking and finance space are thinking outside the box. They are investing in their businesses. They are looking at how customers will be served. We have moved from banking and, and finance space, have moved from the traditional way of serving customers, okay. and things are different. All right. So I, I guess, um, OK, Mark. So I wanted to add on briefly. All right. Um, spot on, but what that also means is that what we have what we call the hybrid work culture now mm -hmm. that has emerged as a result of the COVID and all that. Mm -hmm. To be very honest, on the international uh, arena or elsewhere, too many people are still working from home. I mean, in Africa or in Ghana, we appear to have all gone back to work, but in the US, UK, Canada, there are people, too many people are still working from home. So hybrid work life okay. that has actually centered, become a center of strategy. And also because of the COVID and all the ramifications thereof, the banks in Africa are still dealing with high interest rate. And that's a major turbulence for corporate, uh, you know, uh, for corporate operation. Okay. 
so that, for example, now as because of the debt distress argument I advocated initially, mm -hmm. there has it has generated too many issues where interest rate is almost over of the roof, and now banks are doing lending almost in their forties and all that. That impacts a lot on businesses and all that. So in, you hear the Ghana, uh, you know, traders association oftentimes rising up in arms and saying, no, because borrowing costs is too much uh, and mm -hmm. all that. It's all due to the turbulence, yes. That's, that's, that's right. That's, and, that's, and, 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 yeah, thank you. That's also a great addition to what uh, Dr. Patrick said. So right. I, I deduce that as a result of the, the global um, financial turbulence, caused by other factors like the war and COVID, banking sector or the finance sector generally is suffering from, you know, um, shall, shall I call it um, uh, um, lending uh, paralysis, yep. <laughs> more or less. Yep. So Obviously, it, it could impact yeah. <laughs> on even the banks themselves. Absolutely. Because they don't have enough cash flows to lend out. For that matter, high interest rates. Am I right in saying? Well, so? that's yes and no. Okay. Um, yes and no because uh, it, it it doesn't necessarily follow like that. Mm -hmm. Now uh, the banks play on their balance sheet, yeah. so um, they may have a lot of money, but rates will go up because the borrowing, picking the deposit taking avenues may be very expensive, and too many factors overhead technology, uh, you know, name it, salary, uh, as banks adopt to te modern technologies that are expensive, mm -hmm. it will show in their balance mm -hmm. sheet. Okay. As, you know, banks are now dealing with all these strategic uh, amb ambivalence, mm -hmm. ambiguities, mm -hmm. as we'll talk about when mm -hmm. we go on. Naturally, that cost will be transferred to, to the customer and it will be built up and all that. So okay. it may not necessarily mm -hmm. mean that the banks don't have money. Okay. They may have money, mm -hmm. but if the cost of raising the money mm -hmm. is high, it will be transferred, okay. and it fits up into the interest rate equation. That's a great one. That's a great one, Mark. Um, yes, the two of you gave some insights that pointed to some key challenges. I want us to zero in on some specifics. So I'll start with you, Dr. Patrick. Generally speaking, leadership in turbulent times. This, what are some of the specific challenges, you, you know, confronting leaders? All right. Thank you, Doc. Um, as far as the leadership space is concerned, mm -hmm. leaders are now grappling with uncertainties. Mm -hmm. I mean, you wake up mm -hmm. and you don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. The uncertainty is there. Mm -hmm. Then apart from the uncertainty, another challenge is technology. Mm -hmm. Now, technology is changing the way we do things. I mean, just recently, I happened to um, lecture a group of people in digital finance. Mm -hmm. And we had to look at how we were, I mean, serving customers mm -hmm. using the manual way of mm -hmm. serving customers. Mm -hmm. We slept, we woke up, technology is here. Nobody wants to walk into your banking hall. I'm in mm -hmm. my house. You need to serve me. Mm -hmm. That is a specific thing we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Another issue is health and safety issues. Mm -hmm. COVID-19. I mean, you need to deal with it. We are here. We are in the, in the economy. And then you are a leader. You are leading a bank. And then there's COVID-19. You have to grapple with that. Mm -hmm. So you are looking at some uncertainties. We are looking at technology. You are looking mm -hmm. at health and safety issues. Mm -hmm. We are even looking at the global competition. Mm -hmm. You can decide not to uh, go beyond your borders, but I can assure you some banks will decide to come to your country mm -hmm. for which you don't have control mm -hmm. to say that you will not allow them. I mean, it's not even banks alone. Apart from banks, all organization, you can decide to be a local champion. Mm -hmm. But one day you will sleep and you wake up and then there is a competition at your doorstep. So basically these are some, some of, the of the things challenges. that the challenges that the uh, leadership will have to grapple with. Technology, competition, health and safety issues, uncertainties, okay. you, are, you should be ready to grapple so, with that. So, so no single solution is fit for purpose for a long time because there are uncertainties surrounding the situation we find ourselves in. You, you, you cannot tell for sure what will happen the next moment. Not at all, okay. no, not at all. Mark, yeah. some specifics, 
Doc mentioned uncertainties and so on and so forth. Your, your thoughts? I think uh, he, he's spot on, but you know, before I actually do specificities, mm -hmm. let me just, let me re-echo the, mm -hmm. the uncert uncertainty part. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I can also attribute mm -hmm. you to the book you've written. Okay. This whole uncertainty and all that actually means that the world is in what we, we call in strategy, the VUCA world. Mm -hmm. And the VUCA world which you have eloquently written about this one means, you know, <clears throat> volatility, uncertainty, chaos, and ambiguity. It doesn't end there because the evolving chaos and the, the, the rapidity of the chaos has actually also forced other strategies to bring what they call the bunny. Mm -hmm. And the bunny, because you are unable, you mm -hmm. raise the issue that there isn't a one-fit-all solution. Mm -hmm. So you have bunny. And Bani means brittle, mm -hmm. anxious, mm -hmm. non-linear, mm -hmm. and incomprehensible. Mm -hmm. It doesn't end there at all because the raging, the raging <laughs> earthquake mm -hmm. around the turbulence in, in organizations and international arena means that we also have another concept or abbreviation called TUNA. Mm -hmm. So today, I'm uh, sorry, your audience, to, <laughs> yeah, to we educate are, we are you a lot. with <laughs> Bunny and Tuna <laughs> and VUCA <laughs> and all that. It means that the turbulence is a very important thing. Tuna means turbulent, mm -hmm. period. That's the T. Mm -hmm. And the U in the Tuna is not the fish we eat, too. it's uncertain. Mm -hmm. And the N is novel. Mm -hmm. And then the A is ambiguous. Mm -hmm. So synchronizing mm -hmm. VUCA, mm -hmm. BANI, and TUNA, mm -hmm. one dominant theme becomes obvious. Mm -hmm. Ambiguity, turbulence, and turbulence, and turbulence. So, mm -hmm. so let me now come to specificity mm -hmm. and then begin to uh, maybe credit one. Look, in the disease arena, the COVID-19, which actually rocked the world. I mean, the, we all woke up one day and we didn't know what to do. Now, uh, at the leadership front, I am quick to say that I, uh, one, I, one idol I fancied along the, is, is Professor Ampofo. He told me whilst coming here that as soon as I mentioned his name, although I am a chief myself, I should let the audience know he's the Amri uh, chief at Chebi. So <laughs> Prof Ampofo and the Noguchi team actually rose up to the, the task during the COVID era a lot, and perhaps the communication bit too from the presidency and all that, because too many things were uncertain. The scientists didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They had never seen any virus or pandemic like that. And the, the, the risk of too many people dying meant that you could be very haphazard, but under an organized leadership, under ready to learn leadership, and under constant communication, 360 degrees communication to the people of Ghana around the clock meant that overall, and also open-mindedness, mm -hmm. that others develop vaccines. And a lot of people were willing to go and get vaccine because of communication and mm -hmm. the scientific backing. Those are all dealing with, uh, you know, turbulence, uh, leadership, how leaders deal with turbulence, you know, in times like that. And I find that very illustrating okay. and it's worthy of a uh, discussion. Yeah. All right. So let, let's also bring it um, to, he spoke about uncertainty within organizational leadership. But I want us to go a bit deeper before yeah. I touch on technology, as you guys mentioned. Within a typical organization, across board, what are some of the challenges that are currently being experienced okay. by leaders? By leaders, all right. In their effort at promoting productivity and development of the organizations. All right. From where I sit, uh, you know, taking a very quick map of organizations uh, that we know without mentioning name, you know, um, one, the fact is that turbulence is a part of human nature. Mm -hmm. And make no mistake about that. 
It is the intensity of the, 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 the nature of the turbulence which will decide what a leader does. But what a leader will do in an organization also depends on, and I submit this, mm -hmm. on pre-turbulent readiness. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? How mm -hmm. do you, your, your daily mm -hmm. uh, scenarios and all that? Now, so coming home to Ghana, too many organizations have tried to navigate around that. But although we don't have hardcore statistics to mm -hmm. show that, mm -hmm. but they are still grappling with mm -hmm. all these difficulties around high inflation. Remember mm -hmm. that uh, part of the turbulence is that Ghana shot up to about 54% mm -hmm. with our inflation. Yeah. So a lot of corporations in Ghana today are dealing with high cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. Not two ways about that. Mm -hmm. That means so much, you know, so bottom line is that some, you know, staff would have to now come, a group of staff, non-essential staff may have to come tomorrow. Another set of people may have to come the next day, switch it to little things as putting on off the light when nobody is in the office mm -hmm. and, and matters around that. And also from uh, the pandemic standpoint, there are too many organizations today in Ghana that are still encouraging their workforce to even wear the nose mask mm -hmm. as of now. Mm -hmm. Although Ghana is in a green alert, which means that COVID is no more in Ghana. Corporations are still really making sure that they close all their gaps. So for me, and others are also employing technology very, very, very well. AI, artificial intelligence, we, we to which will go there. On that. It's also in the often and, 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 and from where I sit, last one, then I give my brother the opportunity, is that the uh, compliance on sustainability and environmental, social, and governance matters are actually hanging on, on, on the clock okay. there. And watch that space that is going to actually uh, feed into the turbulence because like it or not, that's where we are going. So, uh, Dr. Patrick, yeah. some specific challenges. All right. So, um, thank you, Doc. Mm -hmm. See, one thing that um, when you study leadership and you mm -hmm. look at trends, mm -hmm. I mean, if you listen to I mean, speeches, of course, some of us, we didn't meet Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. If you listen to speech of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, if you're listening to Obama, if you're listening to any of the leaders that we know of in the world, mm -hmm. they will tell you specifically that they are not oblivious of the challenges that is ahead. Mm -hmm. In fact, all of them, they spend time to understand their situation. So be it economic, be it industry, mm -hmm. wherever you find yourself. So leaders are actually spending time to understand where they find themselves. No, more time. More time. Mm -hmm. In fact, if, I mean, you know, if you're a leader, maybe you should be the first person to enter the workplace and the last person to leave. Sometimes we send mails to our CEOs and they respond to the mail sometimes 12 midnight and you wonder whether they don't sleep or not or what. But the honest truth is that leaders are now realizing that um, everything starts with them and then it ends with them. So they actually have spent time or they are spending time to and more time, as you said, more time to understand their situation. I mean, specifically, if you go to the workplace environment, we'll tell you, like he said, we'll tell you that when you close, make sure you put the light off. Make sure that if your PC is not in use, switch it off. You remember some time ago in the workplace, we used to have, have centralized ACs. Now we say, no, what, that, what um, that was doing was that whether there are 10 people in the room or uh -huh. one person in the room, the AC is being utilized. So now what we are saying is that, you know what, you are sitting here, let's get some splits here for you. If you are also sitting there, you are going, put it off. Now leaders are spending, in fact, they are paying attention to, to the detail. Assistance, you know, those days we used to say that management don't have time for for the fine details, but mm -hmm. now management have time. Like you said, compliance is there. Internal audit is there. Mm -hmm. External audit will come. You have, we have institutionalized all this um, department just to make sure that we get to the finance detail so that at the end of the day, we will not miss anything. Because the honest truth is that wherever you find yourself, I mean, if you are even in the, in the, in the banking and finance space and you have to uh, make a mistake, 
the money is gone. How are you going to recover that? So leadership, leadership is now spending time to manage risk. Okay. So risk management is actually on the top of the radar. Now we are even looking at our strategies that we are implementing in the organization, how sustainable that strategy is. You're always serving customers. But what if we wake up one day and we are not able to serve customers? I mean, you said we shouldn't touch on technology yet. We, but, we, we, will, but we will come to that. At this, point, but, I, at this point, I will acknowledge that indeed technology has a key role to play. So in the face of all these challenges, Mark mentioned Bani, Tuna, you mentioned uncertainties and all that. They all feed into the technology. Technology comes handy when it comes to dealing with some of these things. That's the general view. We will, at this point, because I want today our viewers to participate more, because this is the first time we are featuring two guests. We want the viewers to participate more. So we're going to take our first break. When we come back, we'll open the phone line straight away. Then we'll continue the conversation. So let's take a breather, and we shall be right back. This is Leadership 360, live on Metro TV, DSTV channel 277. We are discussing the topic, leadership in turbulent times. Our phone line for you to join us in this conversation with these two wonderful gentlemen remains 0531-982298. 0531-982298. If you are out of the shores of Ghana, just add plus 233 three and you'll get through to us. You can equally send a WhatsApp and we shall read it on the program. So before our breather, gentlemen, where you guys gave us an insight into the, the nature of the turbulence we find ourselves in, the challenges they are in, and then how technology is part of the challenge and at the same time a solution to the challenge. Mm. At this point, I want to fuse the two and ask you, what best leadership approach can be used under the circumstance in addressing the continuous challenge that we are finding from economic perspective, political, uh, sociological perspective, within the organization, within the national leadership discourse, all that. I will want to start with you, uh, Mark. Thank you. Um, I think once we are into leadership approach, then we are also uh, in a very, um, in a very broad environment mm -hmm. because there are no yes and no answers mm -hmm. as the VUCA, BANI, and TUNA concepts mm -hmm. actually uh, explain. Mm -hmm. uh, leadership approaches vary from across too many arenas. Mm -hmm. But what is important for purposes of this conversation is that when you are a leader, we have what we call leadership uh, maturity okay mm -hmm. leadership by composure mm -hmm. and i watched your last episode where you talk about the behavioral traits mm -hmm. of leadership mm -hmm. where or, or some are sanguine and others mm -hmm. are name it and all mm -hmm. that that kind of conversation is not just for the fun of it it is to help you appreciate that as a leader what we call emotional intelligence is mm -hmm. very very key mm -hmm. And it's even gone beyond emotional intelligence. There is what we call the adversity quotient. Mm -hmm. So when you blend the emotional quotient and the adversity quotient, and understanding that the very world you operate in is very turbulent, and it's on an ongoing basis, there are too many rapid events that are coming in, then we would require you as a leader to master the emotional capacity you build over time through the adversity. The adversity is coming from all these uh, environmental variables buffeting you as a leader to be calm. Mm -hmm. And in the military, military generals will tell you when there's war and there's chaos and all that, you don't panic at all. You stay very calm and then learn how to navigate around the storm. So summarizing my long thesis is that leadership in such turbulent times the best approach that will help you steer off and also survive is that composure, 
leadership under calmness mm -hmm. and also exhibiting very high emotional uh, quotient and also adversity quotient Great. to be able to bring Great. teams together. Yeah. But let me put you also uh, just to clear for, 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 for the benefits of the viewers yes. and myself. How do you mean by um, adversity quotient? Well, what we mean, in fact, the very authors who did a lot of research into adversity quotient is that, number one, is that whether you like it or not, adversity in the form of turbulence mm -hmm. would be bedevil you mm -hmm. as a leader. Mm -hmm. And when, I, when you gave me the opportunity from the onset, I took uh, turbulence mm -hmm. all the way from the individual level, mm -hmm. organizational level, mm -hmm. to the international level. Mm -hmm. And I establish as a fact that turbulence is a way of life, it's mm -hmm. part of life. Mm -hmm. As we say in strategy, that mm -hmm. change is constant. constant. Can you imagine mm -hmm. such an oxymoron that mm -hmm. change is constant? Mm -hmm. So as a leader, you would not necessarily or naturally go through lots of different phases of turbulence. Mm -hmm. In the process, you get maturity out of that. Mm -hmm. And you are that sort of maturity helps you navigate around unknown and emerging complexities. That's, that's right. That's, 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 that's mm -hmm. clear that's right. to everybody Thank that you. adversities are part and parcel of our yeah. lives. And as individuals and leaders, we need to appreciate that these things will come. And when they do come, we need to understand that our composure yeah. is key to surmounting or surviving within. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. So, Dr. Patrick. I will definitely come back to technology, but mm -hmm. leadership, what is the best approach under the circumstance? All right. Thank you very much, um, Doc. I think that it's, um, it's, it's just simple. I mean, taking a cue from what he said. For, I mean, Doc, you have known me for some time, and I have always been a proponent of situational leadership. I mean, tough times call for tough leadership. I mean, you can't, it's not business as usual. When you wake up and COVID-19 is around, it's no longer business as usual. Or you wake up How and then- How do you mean by tough leadership? So, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to break it down. Okay. So I'm, I'm actually proposing a situational leadership. And what do I mean by that? Like he said, the situation that you find yourself in will call for the kind of leadership style that you need to demonstrate. Now, for instance, if there's a, a fire outbreak in an environment, you don't go practicing democracy and say, please, I beg you, can you step out? So it tells you that the situation calls for a specific kind of leadership that will help solve the situation. And so in tough times, if you want to be talking, uh, looking at um, applying situational leadership, then what we can say is that you need to be um, agile. You need to be adaptable to the situation. Really look at your strategy how you can adapt your strategy to fit the situation. If it means that this show, the person leading, he says that, um, I mean, you have even done, done well. You've brought in people. Either two, you were doing it alone. I don't know whether it's out of <laughs> situation or something. <laughs> but just, just by the way. But the point is that whatever you find yourself doing or whatever challenge that you have on hand will call for a specific kind of leadership style that will help you to navigate the, the turbulence. Mm -hmm. And so in, 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 in line with that, you need to be clear in your vision. You need to communicate the vision well. Because we are all stressed out. We don't even know what to expect, uncertainty. Now we come and we don't even know the next action to take. Mm -hmm. And so you need to be clear as far as the vision is concerned. Now, apart from being clear with the vision, you also have to uh, make sure that your communication the timing, mm -hmm. it's also very important. Mm -hmm. If you need to talk to me to do something and you delay so much, I mean, in, 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 I'm sure in uh, 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 military, I'm sure you, you would have been already gone down already. <laughs> so what we are saying is that the tough times will call for a situational leadership that will let help us to navigate the challenge situation and achieve the same results. So the vision must be clear. Mm -hmm. You have to be agile you have to also be strategic, mm -hmm. such that you have to look at the whole thing and then come out with a strategy that will help you to move on. And so basically, these are the three main things. Of course, there are mm -hmm. others where you come and in, in, even in terms of difficult situations, you have to even motivate your, your, your team. Okay. 
You walk in as a leader and everybody expects to hear something from you. Mm -hmm. They are all suffering the same fate you are suffering, mm -hmm. but they expect you to be resilient. Mm -hmm. It's not a leader you come and you are panicking. Mm -hmm. I mean, so what is wrong with our leader? Mm -hmm. We come and then you have to be tough mm -hmm. because you, we are lead, you are leading, we are seeing you, you are not seeing us. And I'm not sure any team, any organization or any a country or economy will want to put a frail leader or a freed man leader or woman mm -hmm. in place. So mm -hmm. people are looking at you and you just have to be that tough, resilient and be decisive in decision making. That is not the time to make mistakes. Okay. So there's, there's this uh, 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 jargon in the banking and finance and of course in so many industries that says that you must get it right the first time and every time. Mm -hmm. And so in turbulent situations, it's not try and error. You need to be sure because you don't know what to expect. You need to be very precise and concise as far as the situation is concerned. That is where you can get your team to rally behind you. After what is leadership? It's about influencing people and it's about getting the results achieved. I mean, like you said, tuna, VUCA, and all that. It's about it's achieving about the results. Result. Anyway. Without it, we can, we can do all that we do. We'll do. Without the results, forget it. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So agility, adaptability, good communication, timely communication, yeah. and, you know, focus on strategy and timeliness are key to effective leadership within the period, per your submission. Exactly. That's a great one. Now, I will come back to the two of you again with regards to technology. Now, within the space, now we have so much technology. You mentioned AI, artificial yeah. intelligence. It's now the order of the day, yeah. whereby a lot of leaders are resorting to that. Now, coupled or attached to technology is agriculture, where leaders believe that nationally or at the national level, one of the keys to better development or improved development under the circumstances is to utilize technology through artificial intelligence to promote agriculture. I'm going to bring that question in your view or from your perspective, what are some of the key areas that this technology can be harnessed to improve both organizational performance and, as I said, within the, at the national level, the Greek sector, right. specifically? Thank you, Doug. And uh, I think this is more suited to me because as a coconut farmer, <laughs> I, my farm is remote and far okay. off from the, the Suhun Kumasi Road. Okay, before, before you, before <laughs> you right. continue, let, me, let me quickly repeat the full lines for our, our viewers. It's 0531 You can just add plus 233 if you are outside the shores of Ghana. So let's continue. So Mark. I was making a joke, but okay. that's core to my, my okay. submission. All right. The issues which affect the agriculture economy are many, okay? Mm -hmm from input to uh, output mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, harvest, uh, in, you know, hybrid, uh, good yielding seed, and also evacuation of, you know, produce to urban centers mm -hmm. where they are needed most and mm -hmm. all that. It's a whole, it's a whole complication. Mm -hmm. Now, so begin to imagine uh, an, a society or a country like Ghana where infrastructure is so, so, so low and people have farms that they cannot access by vehicles or so on, and then you got either a robot or an AI custom made to actually help the poor people to irrigate their farm or to help them clear their farm mm -hmm. or to actually also have some solar light that would allow people even to work sometime. You know, so technology in the agriculture sector it would be so transformational. Mm -hmm. In the Kenyan economy, which is so pervasive, in, in Kenya, we know for a fact that the use of mobile technology mm -hmm. has transformed the Kenyan agricultural export market beyond belief. And Kenya is known as the dominant uh, showcase mm -hmm. for agriculture and technology combination. Mm -hmm. That is the type of you know, uh, influence we require, technological uh, progress, to actually impact on our agriculture so that as a country that does rely extensively on agriculture for everything, if you inject a little sense of 
artificial intelligence or some robotics into mm -hmm. agriculture and add that on to uh, you know climate-friendly energy solutions, we will be going a very long way All that right. I know for a fact. All yeah. right. Dr. Patrick. Yes, um, thank you, Doc. No. Maybe you can look at it from the, the organizational point of view, technology at the workplace. Yes. How so leaders can utilize that to achieve productivity. All right, thank you. Now, Doc, I think that um, technology and businesses, I mean, I would call them a Siamese twins. I mean, you can't do without okay. it. Right. In fact, whether we like it or not, technology has come to stay. And so the traditional way of doing things are no longer working. I mean, people are calling for different ways of doing things. I wanted to pick it from the agri sector, but since you have limited <laughs> me to, <laughs> to the organization. Because yeah, yeah. we are almost I mean, done. Okay. Yeah. The time but is yes. already No, no, that's gone. okay. That's okay. So, so what, what is happening is that um, we need investment as far as technology is concerned in the industry. I mean, it costs for lots of investment, and then it costs for lots of education as far as technology is concerned. Now, one challenge is that sometimes we are so fascinated about investing in technology, we buy the technology and it becomes a white elephant. Because sometimes even the, the know-how, we don't even have it. it. And so, right. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big thing. So, so an so investment in technology is key. Very key. For leaders. Leaders Very must key. consider a great investment, investment in, in technology. technology to surmount the challenges. That's right. On that note, we have an honor code on this program. Let's quickly take a look at our honor code and when we are back, we'll wrap up the program. Mm -hmm. I am a proud and firm African. I will take a stand. I will lead and be the change. Come and take my hand. For the safety, HANA, and welfare of my country and company come first. Always and every time. The HANA, welfare, and comfort of the people I lead come next. My own ease, comfort, and safety come last always and every time. Welcome back. Leadership in turbulent times is what we have discussed over the period. To wrap up the, the program, in, two, in just two seconds, yeah. what's your final word, Mark? My final words. Training, self-training as leaders, must understand what is going on and also invest in our people. Thank you. Thank you too. Yes, so I will say that um, leaders must stay informed and be, apart from being informed, we need to re be adaptable and then also rethink as far as our strategies are concerned. That is the only way we can achieve the target. Thank, Thank you. you very much, gentlemen. gentlemen. It's been amazing having you on the program. Let me also use the opportunity to thank uh, the Leadership Tricity team, especially my producer, Bilikis Giwa, for continuously delivering week after week that resulted in even the recognition for 2023 among 100 most inspiring change makers. This program is meant for you and I to critically look at ourselves as leaders or aspiring leaders so as to learn or learn and relearn to accelerate the development of our leadership skills for the betterment of our society. It's been an amazing time having you around. Next week, we shall continue the conversation. It is my hope and wish that as we continue week in, week out, we all make the difference in our small corners wherever we find ourselves. Nice having you around. Let's have a beautiful weekend ahead. Bye. <laughs>